Hello, my name is John Kirkpatrick. I am 21 years old and I graduated from Franklin High School in Nashville, Tennessee. During my senior year, I committed to play football at the Naval Academy. What I didn't know was that I would be going to the prep school in Rhode Island, but that was fine because I ultimately wanted to end up at the Naval Academy. What I also didn't know was that I would be going through a lot of military stuff that I didn't think I would be going through. During the summer, I went through indoctrination, which is a two week process of basically detailers yelling and screaming in your face, waking up at 5 a.m., not going to bed until 10 p.m. They wanted to make sure we got a good night's rest for the next day. We had to learn all of the rates and ranks of officers and enlisted in the military for the Navy. Once those two weeks were over, we started school. We Everyone took four classes, depending upon what you placed in the placement exams that we took. You were either in foundation, intermediate, or advanced. Me, being the person I am, I took those uh, as a joke and ended up in foundation where I didn't do good in my classes. I thought everything was a joke and I didn't do well. Ultimately, I didn't make it to the Naval Academy and that is why I chose to move to uh, Coastal Carolina after I was told that I wasn't able to get into the Naval Academy. I went back into recruiting and got in touch with a coach here and he got me in on the roster for fall camp of 2021 season. And went through fall camp, went through the season, you know, classes were going fine and then I just kind of hit a wall. I didn't feel like doing anything. I was just drained, really. After that, I quickly figured out that I needed to do well in my classes. So I came around and ultimately decided to major in business management. And uh, I'm still a business management major currently. For my company and industry project, I chose to do the lumber industry and specifically Georgia Pacific for my company. Some of the strengths were pretty normal for an industry and company, but the one that stuck out the most was the most obvious one for a lumber industry at least, and that is there are quite literally trees everywhere. You can go anywhere and harvest trees as long as you have the required permits and certification to do so. From there, take it back to the warehouse. And one of the other things that helps is the technology that has come upon. It's a lot easier to process wood and turn it into pulp or tissue um, or things like that anything paper-wise that you would use on a daily basis. One of the weaknesses over the past two years is COVID. <clears throat> COVID was a big hit in almost every industry, but it certainly hit the lumber industry and specifically Georgia Pacific because of the fact that they could only have a certain amount of people, certain places, um, flights to go meet with clients for selling it was all down and it was all guarded by the government because they didn't want it to spread anywhere that it didn't need to be logistically the strengths and weaknesses for both industry and company wise was basically the same 
each strength played into each um, each side and each weakness played into each side. For my interview, I ended up interviewing one of my dad's co-workers. My dad works in supply chain for LifePoint Health and basically getting um, hospitals various supplies that they need and meeting with clients that need um, help in their hospitals. He talks about how he works in the in work environment and how respect and responsibility is always key and having a, a good workspace and work environment. He also talks about how nothing will ever get in his way because he needs to get it done so he can feed his family and put food on the table. I thought that was very cool um, just because he has to work for what he makes and he has to provide for his own family. So, I mean, there's like a little bit of one of the things that he also said was that he puts his coworkers before himself whenever needing something. He respects them enough that he knows that they will do the right thing and that he knows to put trust in them because a company along the lines of uh, along the lines of this will not be able to run properly without trust in everybody else. One of the things that stuck out to me when I was interviewing him was his tone of voice and how professional he talked. He held himself to a higher standard and he told me that it was because when he was younger he didn't really have much and basically had to work for everything that he owns now. His family really wasn't there for him and he wanted to be different than his dad and his parents um, before his dad. So he wanted to have a life for his kids and wanted his kids to have the life that he couldn't have, basically. He wanted to give them everything that they wanted so that they could be a better person just like himself. One of the ways that I can achieve my goals is to be myself and control what I can control. Because if I do that, then everything else will fall into place. And lastly, to treat everyone as you want to be treated. You never really know when someone is having a bad day until they tell you. And and if you were mean to them before, and then you just look, you just look bad. And I hope that, I would hope that somebody else treats me the same as they would want to be treated because they don't know when I'm having a bad day. I also believe that self-worth is a key factor in succeeding because you can't go on in a business for a very long time if you don't believe in yourself. Believing in yourself makes other people want to believe in you. So the more confident about your workload or even your time management, the more confident other people feel about you and the more confident they feel that you can get tasks done quickly and in a timely manner while being professional.